have so many things that I should be doing right now, but instead I'm filming an ocean tour. Hey kids, Angela here and I am back with another video for you today. This is actually my fourth time trying to film this video because something went wrong every other time. The first time I filmed, I wasn't at even screen recording and I didn't even realize it until 50 minutes in. <laughs> Before I could even try filming again, I accidentally deleted my Notion. And after a bit of back and forth <laughs> between the people at Notion, I did luckily get it back and I'm eternally grateful for that. So if you ever do delete your Notion, just email them and they can restore it for you, luckily. Third time, I just didn't like the results. I feel like it was really boring and I was wearing way too much blush anyways. Mm. I tried filming it last night, but it was way too late in the evening and I was way too tired to even formulate sentences. So here we are today. Thursday, it's not Thursday. Wednesday, January 28th. And I'm finally ready to show you my Notion. Now, some of you are probably wondering what Notion is and it's essentially an all-in-one workspace, organizational, tool, database, you name it, Notion can be that for you. And today I'm gonna show you how I use Notion. And I'm gonna go as quickly as I can, but also as in depth as I can, because I know Notion can be kind of daunting when you are first getting started, because I know I was quite overwhelmed with the possibilities that Notion provides. Without further ado, let's just get into it. But before we do so, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I also wanted to thank you so much for clicking on this video because it means a lot to me and I'm gonna do my best to keep you for as long as I can. Pound it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, before we get started, I just wanna make sure I'm screen recording because we don't wanna repeat of round one. Without further ado, my Notion. When I first open up my Notion, we enter my homepage. This is basically everything important to me that I would like easy access to. Now, it's nothing too, nothing too special. I am a very simple gal. I like to keep things simple. I used to have like photos and GIFs and all that, and I know people can go hard on the aesthetics, but I just felt that looked a bit too cluttered for my taste, hence the simplicity, but you can spice things up with a lot of color, as you can see that I've done here. Right up at the top here, I actually just added this today, it's an affirmations little list. You all probably know what affirmations are, they're just positive affirmatory sentences you say to yourself on a pretty regular basis, and soon enough, after telling yourself enough times that you are worthy, you are loved, you are special, You'll start to believe that. Like I said, I just added this today. I haven't really thought up any affirmations yet. Anyway, beneath that, I have my sort of three main tabs, if you will. I will go in depth through each of those in a moment. But for now, I have my life tab, my academics tab, as well as my YouTube tab. And those are like the three sort of key aspects of my life at the moment. Right below that, I have a little section for my groceries that I need this week. I have, well, you can probably read, but I have them all under this little checkbox so that when I do pick them up from the grocery store, I can just check them off like so. Now to sort of create all these little things, you can see this little plus sign right here. And when you click it, it pops up a list of blocks that you can choose from. Anything from random headers to lists to dividers and other things like so. And another way you can access that sort of command is the forward slash key. That's kind of like Notion shortcut to access the blocks. But what's great is that you can just check things off as you go with the to-do list. So that's kind of fun. And this is really easy to just update as the days go by and as I go grocery shopping. I have created a little column here to do that, you just take whatever block, bring it to the side, and it'll create a new column like that. But I like how it's like this. I have this little quote, and it says, 
so many things are changing around you and you are changing too by i believe morgan harper nichols who i believe is like a singer i i'm not totally sure i just did a quick little google search and that's what it told me anyway i just found this quote on pinterest and i thought it was very very topical if you will 2021 we're all ready to see some change obviously so i thought the quote was very fitting to have just to remind me of the good things that are to come this year hopefully then beneath that i have a link to one of my pages my someday page which i will get into and below that i have my finances page which is pretty self-explanatory but i will also get into that below all of that I have a little call out, as Notion calls it. This is just kind of like a way to highlight something, but you can use it for anything. I use it as a reminder to kind of collect myself, remind myself to focus on how I'm doing. I really want this year to be one of self-growth, self-reflection, self-improvement, and all of that, and I'm sure Many of you are in the same boat. So having little reminders like this can really help me center myself, realize what I need in the moment if I'm feeling overwhelmed or whatnot. So the last thing on my homepage is this little exam slash assignment schedule. And this is a link to a page under my academics page that I will get into, but I have it set so that it shows me only what's due within the upcoming week. And what's great is that as the days go by, Notion can, you know, update it itself, which is so great. As long as you have the correct dates and the parameters set, you don't have to worry about changing this yourself, which is really handy. So that's it for my homepage. Let's get right into my life hub. Like I said, I'm a very simple gal. And as you can see here, things are very simple. If you have seen many Notion tours in the past, you may recognize that my font is different than the standard Notion font. But to change it, you go to the three dots at the top right here, and you can choose the default font, the serif font, which is also very aesthetically pleasing, or the mono font. Something about this font just really resonates with me, and I, I like it a lot. So that's why I am using it here. Again, super customizable. Although not really because they only have three font options, which is weird. You can also change the size of the text. Cool, but I like things to be easy to read. So I'm gonna keep it at the default size. And you can also change the width of your page if you want it to be full like that, or just, you know, like that. <laughs> it's there for you. Anyway, this is my life hub. This is everything Angeli. So original, right? This is everything that is relevant to my life, pretty much. Starting at the top left, I have a bullet journal section. As some of you know, I am a huge bullet journal advocate and user, <laughs> which is why you don't see me using Notion as a planner, because I already have a brilliant planning system that works very well for me. But I know lots of people do use Notion as a planner, so if that's something you need, again, Notion can provide. This also is not sponsored. I am just that obsessed. Anyway, my bullet journal spread. Right up at the top here, I have a link to my bullet journal Pinterest board. So whenever I'm in need of inspiration, I just open that up and it will take me to my bullet journal Pinterest board. To do that, you just click on the plus sign, scroll down, or you can also type link and down here under the media section, you can add a web bookmark. You just paste whatever link you want to embed in your page and boom, it's there. And I believe you can change the colors too, which is super fun. But I like the yellow because it matches this little emoji, which is also super fun and customizable. Right below that, I have a little database as Notion calls them, of some potential bullet journal spread ideas. Whenever I like encounter a good idea, for a spread, I can put it in here. For instance, I just added this 28 days of self-love that I plan on including in my February bullet journal plan. This is inspired by Caitlin's Corner here on YouTube, similar to like a gratitude kind of spread, you know? But here I have what the spread is, the kind of category or what kind of spread it is, whether it's a monthly, weekly, daily spread, or if it pertains to a specific month, I can include that as well. And the checkbox is just to indicate whether I've included it or not. I could also even add one more column of just like my general thoughts 
on the spread. If I thought it was useful or not, I can include that just so I know whether I should include it in the future or not. That's just an idea there. Lastly, on my bullet journal spread page, whatever, I have kind of my criteria or what I'm looking for in my next bullet journal because I'm not close to running out of pages, but I know within the next few months I'm gonna need to start a new one. And so obviously I've been shopping around and there is a lot on the market in terms of bullet journals, but I really want to make sure that I'm buying a good one for me as the stationary lover that I am. And so these are ones that I'm potentially interested in. And I've also included some qualities that I'm looking for. I've learned that page density thickness is very important to me. Bleeding, ghosting, whatever is not okay anymore. <laughs> Hence this criteria. Also white pages, I need, I realized. And so this is just stuff for me to keep in mind when I do purchase my next bullet journal. And so that is it for my bullet journal page. Right below that I have a grocery list. This is kind of just like a random page. It just sort of consists of foods I like to eat and I have them all organized into categories. As you can see, I have my proteins, my sauces, I don't really know what else to call that, condiments, just kind of things, spreadables. I like that actually. Spreadables. <laughs> as well as veggies, fruits, carbs. Yeah, but this is just nice to refer to if I am going grocery shopping, just so that I can keep in mind things I like. <laughs> right below that, I have a little quote again that just says, hey, be proud of yourself because we really are hard working beings. Like you woke up today. That is something you should be proud of. You got up and if you didn't, it's never too late. Still be proud of the things that you do, no matter how small they are. <laughs> Sorry to be so cliche but it is what it is so moving to the right side i have my someday page which you saw on my home page but this is basically a bucket list of kind of every type of thing that i want to try anything from podcasts to bars restaurants cafes if i want to experience it i am adding it here whenever i hear recommendations or anything i can just type it in, tell myself what it is, whether I've tried it or not, if it's a series or a book, I can say I finished it, or if it's in progress, then I'll select that. I also have a section for a rating out of 10, and that can kind of gauge whether or not I would want to try it again or something like that. And I also have a section for a link. This is especially helpful for recipes. As you can see here, I just can click on this and it will take me to the recipe page. For restaurants, you can always link their like Google map location or the menu if you're feeling a little extra. There are so many times when you like make plans with your friends, you don't know where to go, and there's just so many options. So it's better to keep track of all the things you want to try. That's pretty much it. Hope that made sense. <laughs> Moving on now to my finances. This is a pretty self-explanatory kind of spread, but I use it to track my finances. I more so use it to track the money that I'm spending rather than like an actual budget because at least right now, I feel like I don't need that. What I do need is to be able to visualize where I'm putting all my money because at the end of the month I'm like how the hell did I spend so much money because I never really refer back to my bank statement I just kind of see the number pay my credit card bill move on with my life in organizing all of my purchases in this way I can kind of take a look and see oh did I really need to go out and eat at this restaurant or something or did I really need to buy you know three tops <laughs> at Urban Outfitters no but I did anyways multiple times this month and that's where this little call out comes in instead of feeling sorry and guilty for spending a bit too much money you can take those old habits chuck them out the window and use them instead to empower you to make better and smarter purchases. Better yet, don't even spend any money. And so this little reminder is for me <laughs> to keep in mind <laughs> when I am shopping online. I also have a little section right here for my income and this is just to track 
how much money I actually am making and it's kind of in pretty much the same layout as my spending tracker except it was more so what I got paid for, how much I got paid, where I got paid from, when I received it, and this I just plan on using it to categorize the month that I received money because I don't have like a job job I guess I do have a job, but I only work three hours a week, so I don't really earn that much money. <laughs> so It's just good to keep track of that so I can kind of understand how much money I actually have coming in because I know it's not a lot. But once January is over, I have a little section down here called archive. And when January is done, I'm just going to drag that into there and call it a day because I don't really need that there. I do have the exact same table for each month of the year and that's another cool thing about digital trackers and things is that you can just copy and paste it however many times you need it this like table itself i believe was a notion template that i just took which is great notion has tons and tons of templates for you to access now below all of that i have another call out another reminder because i have such bad spending habits and i'm a big big impulse buyer. So I have made it a point to ask myself this question every time I am about to make a purchase. And that is, would I forget this thing had I not bought it? And that really gets you thinking. Because <laughs> in the past, I would just kind of, you know, ask myself, like, would this item make my life better? And nine times out of 10, I will say yes, obviously these pants would make my life better. They're such a cool pattern and I need more cool clothing items. When in reality, I don't. So having this reminder is really good for me. And below that, I have these two columns, one of which is my wish list. And this is also to avoid impulse buying. If I am thinking a lot about buying something, I'll add it to my wish list because it's obviously something that I keep thinking about. So having a wish list is also good for like the holiday season. My birthday and Christmas are really close together in the year. So people are always asking me, well not always, mostly my parents, they're asking me, you know, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for my birthday? And I never know what to say. So having a wish list is a great thing to refer back to when you're asked those questions because you can just say like, oh, I've been wanting this thing for my wish list, you know? Related to that, I have a gift ideas section because I really struggled this holiday season with buying gifts because there are so many times when I think of a really good gift idea and I'm like, ooh, so-and-so would love that. And then come time to buy gifts i don't even remember what it is and i'm like uh oh, what what so having just a list of gift ideas is helpful like i don't have a lot of people that i buy gifts for so i can probably pinpoint you know who i was thinking about when i wrote this down like even over the holidays i was talking with my boyfriend and i had like thought of a good gift for him and i can't even remember it now so that would have been good to write down but anyways the past is in the past we move on, we learn, we start a notion. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for my finances. Cool beans. I do have my morning and night routine kind of laid out here. I don't really refer to this. This is just kind of what an ideal morning or evening would look like for me. Cause I am, I am really trying to establish a routine for myself because I really haven't since like 2018 and I'm, I'm not even kidding. 2018, slash 2019 was probably the happiest year of my life because I had such a good routine that I stuck to. Now I wake up kind of like overwhelmed. I'm like, oh, what, what should I do now? This helps kind of ease that a little bit. And that is all for my life page. So let's move on to my academics. Now this template was actually adapted from Janice Studies, who I'm sure some of you may have heard of. She's a study tuber productivity person here on YouTube. And this template was what really got me excited about Notion. So let me take you through it. Now I have kind of customized it a little bit so that it looks a bit more exciting and personal to me. But right up at the top here, we have the bookmarks. This was included in the template. Brain dump is pretty much 
random things. <laughs> I don't really use this, but it's good to have for random thoughts or something like that. Below the brain dump is the assignment exam schedule that I was talking about. And this is basically every single assignment, quiz, discussion post, exam that I have due this term. As you can see, it's all for one course because I'm only taking one course at the moment. I have another course that starts in like March, but that's a future me thing to deal with. I also want to include my readings here because I feel like that might hold me accountable-ish to my readings, I hope, because I'm pretty bad at keeping up with readings, but since I'm only in one course right now, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. <laughs> So, we'll see. So far, so good, but I also don't want to speak too soon. You have space here to check off whether you've completed it, what it is that needs to be done for the class, when it's due, what it is, and some additional, you know, notes or comments. Like for this quiz, for instance, this was the topic of the quiz, so I kind of knew what to study for. And I have it all sorted according to date, as well as completion. So whenever you check this box, it moves it somehow to the top. Anyway, that's it for that. To the left of that, left of left. I have an archive and this, shocking, is actually what my Notion used to look like. I know, I'm pretty sad, honestly. <laughs> but that just goes to show how, you know, your Notion use progresses with time. When this semester is done, I'm gonna find a way to put it in the archive, but I will cross that bridge when I get to it. Right below that, I have a reminder section just to remind myself of things that I need to do. This is all like pretty straightforward stuff and it's really not that necessary, but it's also good to highlight deadlines, like if you have a scholarship that you want to apply for or a program that you're applying for you can write application to jan 30th or something like that you can even bold it because that's probably something important <laughs> but anyways i don't have any applications to do that's that right below that i have my courses subsection like i said i'm only taking two courses this term one of which doesn't start until halfway through the term but i'll take you through my current course right up at the top i have my professor's name his email when his office hours are and i've also linked my syllabus so i can just click on that and it'll take me right to my syllabus which is super duper handy if i ever need to refer to that and to do that you just click the plus sign you can either scroll down or type file oops oops whatever and then <laughs> click on that and then you can choose a file from your computer to upload and link there. Right below that, I have the learning objectives for the course. This I just copy and pasted from the syllabus, but obviously that's, you know, helpful to look at when you're studying and whatnot. And then to the right of that, I have the grade calculator. And I do not take credit for this. This is all Janice, but you basically put in everything that compiles your grade, the weight of it, of course, and then it'll automatically calculate what it is you got in the course. Because I know a lot, a lot of profs tend to not release your like overall grade. They do release grades, but not your overall grade. So what's great about this is that you can input all that information yourself and kind of get a rough estimate as to what your final grade will be. I have no idea how this works. It's just a template that I took from someone. So I will link it in the description so you can use it too. And then moving on to the assignment exam schedule, the same one that you saw at the beginning, but this is everything that I have due for this course within the coming month. That's just a nice visual for me to see. To do that, you just go up to the filter here, create one and set the parameters to only show everything for this course and everything that's due within the next month. But you can also change it to the next week, what was past due, and stuff like that. And that's pretty handy. Lastly, I have my course schedule. This I again copied from the syllabus, but it's good to have and refer to maybe it kind of like forced me to read the syllabus so that now I know what 
we're gonna be doing each class which is handy that's pretty much it for that course here i have my schedule let me fix that up a little bit but this is uneven okay anyways since i only have one class this isn't really too telling but to create the little box when you add a block you can change the color of the background and it'll create a little box there which is kind of fun lastly i have a calendar view of the same assignment and exam schedule which is super cool notion can just do this automatically so this is the table view we saw up here and this with the click of a button can change it into a calendar for you. So if you're more visually, I don't know, stimulated, visual brained, pff, whatever that's supposed to mean, you can do that super easily. And there are also some other, you know, view options here, but I prefer just the calendar. Whatever suits your fancy, it's all up to you. But if you wanna see a more full spread, I can show you my boyfriend's notion. This is the exact same template, template just kind of arranged a bit differently, but you see all his courses here. The schedule, which is absolutely unreal. <laughs> all of his assignments and everything he has to. <laughs> yeah, this is the month of March, but you can flip back through the months RAP <laughs> but he's got a lot of assignments and I'm sure this is a bit more similar to what other people's schedules look like but yeah that is about it for the academics tab so we can go back to my homepage and enter our last hub which is my YouTube now I know this isn't gonna apply to most people but whatever hobbies or you know work that you do you can take some inspiration from this maybe but starting at the top here I have my video ideas database now as you can see I have a lot pretty much whenever I encounter a video that I think would be fun to film I'll put it in here let me think of something oh I might already have this in my list, but it's fine. This is just for the video, for this video I mean. But let's say I want to film a clean with me. So I'd put it in my table and then I would tag it. And I have all these different tags here just to kind of organize all my ideas. I would consider this like a lifestyle trendy video, but also random. Yeah, and I recently added two tags for IG Reel and TikTok because I really want to grow <laughs> of social media presence. So far, not so good because I rarely post on any social media aside from YouTube. If I feel like it would make a good IG Reel or TikTok, I would include that as well. So that when I do film this video, I can remind myself like, oh, I should be also filming a TikTok for this video or something. And then I also have a column for status right here. As you can see, they're mostly empty because I'm not filming right now. I have a bunch of old, old content that I have to get through first or that I want to get through first before I start filming new content. But anyways, the status statuses that I do have are published, brainstorming, filming, and editing. And that's just kind of a thing for me. To refer to yeah i can actually create a filter so that all i see are the videos i'm brainstorming for let me sort of take you through one of these pages first things first change the font <laughs> so that it matches then i will create a page from that idea and you have all these options here at some point i want to create like a template for like video planning I'm not like that far into it yet because all I am posting and editing right now, aside from this, are vlogs from the past few months and stuff. So ideally I would have myself a to-do list 
which would consist of filming, editing, you know, I would have to create a thumbnail, write a description, and like things like that that I would put in my to-do list. After that would be done, I would have a heading for like title ideas or something like that. After a bit of keyword research, I would jot down some possible title ideas, obviously room transformation or something like that. And then, you know, I could add a little icon. That is actually the perfect emoji for a room transformation. I would either do that or like a bed. If there's a bed, a perfect sleeping accommodation. Okay, cool. That's fun. Now, once I'm kind of done with that, I would go back to this. And this is kind of like a cumulative list of all my videos. And I would create a link to the page I just created, the room transformation page for easy access when I do eventually film this video. But let me actually show you a sort of completed YouTube video planner. This is the current video that I'm filming right now. Ideally, this is when I would upload it. Below that I have my to-do list. Currently I am filming. I actually am screen recording so I can check that off almost because it's not quite done yet. But I do have some B-roll and I'm filming the main video right now. Then I have everything else I have to do to finish this video. Like you could also use this exact same template for like an assignment or an essay. Things you have to do like research, rough draft, brainstorm, all that stuff. You could also include that there. And then I have this little divider right here where I now have my in this video kind of outline and i have this call out to kind of remind myself <laughs> of what is most important i believe i did mention the timestamps so that's great i did also tell you to subscribe so that is great too off to a good start <laughs> 40 minutes later <laughs> but this is basically what i wanted to say in the video i kind of touched on these things but like barely but that's more for me because I especially love to ramble. I don't know what it is about me. <laughs> Rambling is my favorite pastime, apparently. And that is a pain for me to edit, but you know, I did that to myself, trying not to do that. So it's good to have outlines. And so I just have these little toggle lists consisting of, you know, what I should say and what I should include in the video. Lastly, I have the titles section and these are just some ideas that I have at the minute. Again, after some keyword research, I'll finalize which title will be the best for the algorithm and then I can upload it and whatever. Some other things I like to include are like inspiration from, you know, videos I watch. For example, for my Pinterest cake, one. I have this little inspiration section and that's just filled with all these cakes. I've seen like a couple people make these Pinterest cakes, minimalistic cakes. So that's potentially a video I might want to film in the future. You can also link like videos that you take inspiration from. Right below that I have my description template. I pretty much just copy and paste this into every single video and then I'll change up the description so that it actually describes what is in that video. And then I have a section for timestamps or chapters as YouTube now calls them. And then I have a section for music. Anyways, last thing on this page is my 2021 YouTube goals. The first one being to hit a thousand subscribers. I think I'm at 480. I don't actually know. I'll have to double check because I actually hid my subscriber count recently and I don't even know how to turn it back on. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Anyways, that's just one of my goals. Another one is to publish all of my old content that I think would be valuable. <laughs> valuable-ish, like some travel vlogs from pre-pandemic <laughs> times, as well as all of my old quarantine vlogs from last year. There is a lot. I just posted a vlog from June 30th, which ties into my last goal, be proud of everything I post. And I will say I am super proud of that video. And I'm excited to keep 
posting vlogs because the more and more I edit, the more and more I enjoy it. And that, my friends, I believe is it for, I'm out of breath, for my Notion tour. We'll go back to my homepage, come full circle. Let me just have one more sip of water before we go. So we have reached the end of my Notion tour. If you guys enjoyed it, please, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this, I recommend you subscribe because it is free after all. If you're watching this right now, I would take that as a sign to subscribe because something obviously compelled you to watch until this point of the video. So like, I hope I sparked some inspiration in you if you are already a Notion user. And if you're not a Notion user, I hope I inspired you to buy it. Not buy it, it's free. Did I mention that? Notion is free. You can upgrade to different plans for my use and your average person. That's not necessary. So I think that's all I have to say. I don't know why I love to ramble as I said before. But here we are, rambling. I am just talking nonsense at this point. So with that, I will see you in my next video. Bye!